Do this in remembrance of me. With those words of our Lord, my friends, we begin our Eucharistic Congress here in the Diocese of Fargo. And I want to welcome all of you and thank you for being here, for setting aside this time, your time, to be with our Lord. When you think about it, there's no better way to spend our time, is there? Some of you may have attended our Eucharistic conference a couple years ago in Fargo, and some of you might have even gone to Indianapolis earlier this summer for our National Eucharistic Congress. And for many of you, this may be the first time that you've been part of an event like this. But whatever the case may be, our Lord has called you. He has invited you to be here. And I know he is eager to offer his grace to each and every one of us during this time that we will spend together and with him. Do this in remembrance of me. We heard those words of our Lord in Paul's account of the Last Supper, the institution of the Eucharist in the second reading a few moments ago. And we hear those words of our Lord every time we celebrate Mass. Maybe we don't think about them that much because we're so used to them. But what is our Lord saying when he says, do this in remembrance of me? He's inviting us. He's inviting us to be part of the great mystery of his love. The great mystery of his salvation for the whole world. He's inviting us into the mystery of God's own divine life and his love for this vast family that he has created. Our Lord wants you and he wants me to be part of what he himself has done when he gave his body and blood for us upon the cross. You see, in the Eucharist, Jesus invites each one of us to abide in him, to share in his life, and to live with him forever. Remember what he said to his disciples in the gospel. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. Just think about that promise. Our Lord offers himself to us in the Eucharist so that we might live with him eternally. How could we pass up such a gift? Why would we pass up such a gift? But first he calls us. First he calls each one of us in a very, very personal way. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. All through the Gospels, my brothers and sisters, Jesus invites ordinary people to be with him. And not just in a passing way, not just for a little bit of small talk, and then we go on our way and back to things as normal. No, he calls us in a very deliberate way and invites us to a whole new way of life, a life that is entirely one with him. My friends, Jesus is still calling, still inviting. Every time the Eucharist is celebrated at Mass, and really wherever our Eucharistic Lord is to be found, 
from the greatest cathedral to the most humble country chapel, Jesus is speaking to us, saying to us, as he said to the apostles so long ago, come, come and be with me. Not just for a moment, not just for a day or a year, but for all eternity. Come and be with me. Come and rest in my presence. Come and receive the life that I share with my Father. Life that I took up once again in the resurrection. Come. To each one of us here today, he says, come and share more deeply in what I have to offer you. You know, the world is kind of fearful of this call, of this invitation. It's fearful of losing something, of giving up its own way of doing things. But you know, the reality is that we lose nothing when we accept this invitation of our Lord. And in fact, we gain everything, right? To those who are far from him, he gently invites them back. He reaches out to us just as he reached out to Peter even after he had denied him. Just as he reached out to the woman who was caught in adultery, just as he reached out to Saul who persecuted his church. Jesus is reaching out to us, calling us. Do we hear him? Do we respond? Do this in remembrance of me. It seems to me that there's a kind of urgency in these words of Jesus. Do this. He's telling his apostles directly to continue what he has done. And he says this to us as well, 2,000 years later. My friends, we need the Eucharist. The entire world needs the Eucharist. We need Christ. Jesus tells his followers, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Why does he say this? Because of this. There is no true and lasting life apart from him. He gives himself to us, my flesh for the life of the world so that we might share in the life that he shares with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Pope St. John Paul II taught us that the church draws her life from the Eucharist. We draw our life from Christ in the Eucharist. And Pope Francis says this, he says, for us, a vague memory of the Last Supper would do no good. We need to be present at that supper, to be able to hear his voice, to eat his body and drink his blood. We need him. We need him. I think our Lord is telling us that there, there can be no bystanders at his banquet. He wants us to enter in, to gather round, to be partakers, to share in the sacrifice that he offers for all of us upon his cross. That's really what the Eucharist is. He's inviting us, my friends, to something enduring, to something eternal. Through the, through the Eucharist, he calls us to be part of a lasting relationship, a deep friendship, a deep intimacy with God that we can attain in no other way. Because above all, the Eucharist is the sacrament of his love, the love that he pours out in great abundance for you and for me. 
Earlier this afternoon, many of you were here as we processed with our Lord in the Eucharist from St. James Basilica here to the Civic Center. And why did we do that? Why did we bring our Lord in procession from the Basilica to here? Father Jasinski gave us a, a beautiful, beautiful reflection on the meaning of such a procession. Why does the church process through the streets with the Eucharist at all? Why did we take the Eucharist on the pilgrimage all the way across the country to prepare for the National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis? Some of you I know were present for that pilgrimage too. And to some it might seem a little bit strange. You can almost count on it. You're going to get some stares from people who don't quite know what we're doing. But really, it's a vivid sign that Jesus comes to us. He takes the initiative. He approaches and offers the invitation. We take the Eucharist in procession, not because of something that we're doing, but because of what Christ is doing. He goes out to the highways and the byways. He reaches out to every soul and invites each one to come along with him, to draw near and be part of his life, to be part of his journey. Our procession is a sign not just to the select few, but to everyone that Christ is here. He is with us and he invites us to come and receive his life and his love. So my dear friends, our presence today at this Eucharistic Congress is actually a response. It's a response to God's grace. He called us here, just as he calls us to every Mass. He offers himself to us in the sacrament of his body and blood, and he invites us to share in his eternal life. He says to each one of us, as if it were just face to face, one on one, exactly what he said at the Last Supper and what he says at every Mass. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen.